Today on how to drink, old people do shots and regret it. Today on how to drink, two ounces of regret. Today on HTD, I'm riding the train to Pukesville. Woo, baby. Today on how to drink, I'm gonna find out if I can still drink like a college student. Today I'm gonna find out if I can still drink like a college senior. This was an episode of how to drink. Even my worst episodes are better. They're just, they are. <laughs> long time, there has been a poster in Meredith's mind that she saw one time of The Shots. And she thought, that's a good idea for an episode. And I have resisted. Until now, we're taking a look at The Shots. The Frat Shots. Uh, I've got a list of drinks in front of me, Meredith. Is there any order to these? Should I just start at the top and roll right along? Yep. Okay. We're gonna do a B-50. Is it supposed to be on fire? That's, yep. You ever go to any frat parties? Nope. I've been to a couple. I hated every single one. All right, so we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of Kahlua, three quarters of an ounce of uh, Bailey's. Oh boy. And then three quarters of an ounce of, of Grand Marnier, and I'm supposed to somehow set it on fire. I don't think you need to measure this. I think you can just layer it. Fair enough. We'll just go to the first line. Okay, Kahlua. So here we go with the Bailey's to layer. What the hell do you think that makes this a B-52? I don't know. By the way, B-52s, slept on. Phenomenal band. I honestly, I hold B-52s and the B-52s, much higher esteem for me than Talking Heads. Why do I put them in the same boat? I just do. I feel like the, the Talking Heads are like the B-52s, but they took themselves too seriously. All right, now our last is this Grand Marnier. I don't believe that's gonna catch fire. I'm gonna try. Get a little flamey. So it's on fire, we got it on fire. I did not think that was gonna burn. It's only 40 proof up top there. It's a little, it's kind of invisible. I hope it's out. I'm gonna make sure it's out because I'm a little bit nervous about that. There it is, the B-52, served on fire for some reason. I guess it's just whatever alcohol's in there, you have to reduce it a little bit. I bet this will be delicious. I bet this is gonna be a really good milkshake type thing. I mean, I have no doubt about that. It certainly won't be sophisticated. Yeah, delicious. My prediction was correct. It was a lot. That was a big shot. That was a big boy shot. So the B-52, I was right. It's a very, it's a sweet, coffee, creamy thing. I don't taste any orange in it. I, I, I don't know that the um, Grand Marnier really did anything. It's very sweet. What can I say, Mayor? What do you want me to say about it? This was your idea. Is there any merit to it? No. No, there's no merit to it. It's a category of drinking that people it are familiar with. It literally tastes like something you'd get in the drive through at Chick-fil-A. Like a milkshake. It tastes like a milkshake. Yeah. Like a coffee milkshake or something like that. Like a coffee ice cream milkshake. I like coffee ice cream. Coffee ice cream is good ice cream. All right, we're doing an Alabama Slammer next. Let's do it. What are we doing? It's a, a half an ounce of slow gin an ounce of amaretto, an ounce of Southern Comfort, and a little bit of lemon and li or lime juice. Okay. Well, I go lime on this one because I'm thinking Southern Comfort, SoCo, and lime, right? So my notes don't really specify. So let's just say a little bit, a little bit of lime. All right, we'll go all the way to a half. Okay, half an ounce of lime juice in there. Now I need half an ounce of slow gin. Slow gin is gin that's infused with slow berries. Slow berries should be kind of bitter and tart. But basically, it's gin that's been made to be pink. So we want a half an ounce of it. My God, it is grenadine red. That is intense. Uh, something tells me that's not all natural. Now we want an ounce of amaretto. And we have kind of the stock standard amaretto, not a fancy one. We're not going up market on these. We're making these the way they would be made in a fraternity. So here we go, one ounce of amaretto. And now one ounce of um, Southern Comfort. Southern Comfort is a, uh, it's, you know what it is, honestly? I realized this recently. It's another version of rock and rye. Mm. That's what it is. Uh, now I shake it, now I shake it, take it, do. Get your ice in there. I just said that we're doing these the way they'd be done in a frat, and obviously this is like not, this is overkill. And uh, well, the nice thing about this not being layered is I don't need to drink this whole thing. I can just sip it. So this is apparently an Alabama Slammer. I feel like I gotta say it like that, right? An Alabama Slammer. Okay, that smells like candy. What? 
is so bad. It tastes like a melted cherry snow cone or melted cherry Italian ice. The juice from the bottom of it. I don't think they drink these in Alabama. Something tells me that this drink, not all that popular in Alabama, could be wrong. Alabama Slammer here. Uh, as I said, it just tastes like it looks, honestly. I'm really shocked by that. I didn't think, because like, it's really weird to me that those ingredients, I'm not surprised they add up to something sweet, but I'm surprised that they add up to like artificial cherry, like really specifically cherry flavor. Yeah, it's starting to take on like a medicinal take. It, this now it tastes like um, cough syrup or something. Woo, slow gin. All the slow berries used in producing this slow gin are imported. Certified color added, 45 proof. Man, Jesus. This bottle belongs in the trash. This is some garbage shit. I'm gonna take this Alabama Slammer and slam it right into the garbage and be right back after this with, uh, apparently we're doing a kamikaze is next on my list. Moving on to the kamikaze right after this. Hey there campers, Ranger Greg here. And I'm partnered with Yellowstone Bourbon to take you on a mixological tour of the national parks. Acadia National Park is the first park to be designated in the eastern U.S. It sits adjacent to Bar Harbor, Maine, which is itself a site of cultural and historical significance. The park is home to the largest mountains on the east coast and consists of some 16 islands. It's the first of the national parks to be created through private land donation. George B. Dorr is called the father of Acadia. Heir to a wealthy textile business, he is credited with mustering the political will to protect the area that became Acadia National Park and served as the park's superintendent from its formation in 1960 until his death in 1944. With Acadia's connection to New England maritime history, I took inspiration from the drinks of New English sailing days of yore to come up with a drink of hot buttered bourbon. The first thing you need to do to make this drink is to make the batter, and I'm gonna have the recipe on screen and in the description below. So let's get to making the drink. We're gonna build it in our glass. First thing we wanna do is warm our glass, and we do that by putting a little bit of our hot water in there. Ooh, that'll be nice and hot. Pour that off. Start with one ounce of our batter, and uh, happily this recipe works out that if it pours fairly freely, although that doesn't look very free, I know, but by hot butter standards, that's pretty good. Now I want to add two ounces of Yellowstone bourbon. Now I need to add three ounces of hot water, and it's a great time to have a handle on your jigger. Going to give that a good stir here. Just try to get everything all incorporated. I like to garnish this with a twist of orange. There it is, the hot buttered bourbon for Acadia National Park. Let's see how uh, this one came out. I'm really excited about this one. That's a lovely thing. On a cold New England night, when a nor'easter's coming through and it's just wet and driving sleet and the sea is angry, that's exactly the thing you want. That is just absolute delicious comfort in a glass. Yellowstone Bourbon donates $1.50 for each bottle sold to the National Parks Conservation Association to help protect and preserve our national parks. To celebrate the 150th anniversary of both park and bourbon, they've released the Yellowstone Select Landmark Edition Bottle Series. Visit limestonebranch.com to find out where you can pick up a bottle in your area. And I personally want to thank Yellowstone Bourbon one more time for helping me take you on this tour of our national parks, one glass at a time. Welcome back, and if you're interested in picking up a bottle of Yellowstone bourbon that old Ranger Greg was talking to you about, why don't you swing on by Curiata, drink.curiata.com, or in the link in the pin comment below, because Yellowstone bourbon is picking up the tab on your shipping. That's right, they are providing free shipping for whatever's in your cart, as long as one of the things in there is a bottle of Yellowstone bourbon, uh, probably for only a limited time only. So use the link in the pin comment below and check it out. Curiata. All right, I'm back, thank you very much. So let's just keep making these horrible drinks. Now, Kamikaze, I have made and had kamikazes. So we're making two of these. Each one calls for about a half an ounce of lime juice. So I'm gonna use an ounce of lime juice total, which in my brain right now, I'm like, that's a lot of lime juice for a couple of kamikazes. This could be a daiquiri and your life would be so much better. Yeah, you can make a margarita. Yeah, a margarita. <laughs> There's a lot of better things this drink could be, but it won't be. It's gonna be a kamikaze. You can already tell that I'm not happy about this experience. Two ounces of uh, vodka per kamikaze. So here we go, four ounces of vodka. And uh, now we need um, a half an ounce of Cointreau per kamikaze, so one ounce of Cointreau. All right, now we need some ice in there. And here we go with the ice. Big, little, I could just crack one ice cube for these in truth, like we're taking these way too seriously. And our topper, the actual drink there, slam it shut. Shake, 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 shake. Two kamikazes. 
I think we gotta do them together. All right. We're not gonna shoot them though. That'd be insane. I have no desire to do that. Cheers. Yeah, I remember that flavor. It's a disappointing margarita. Yep, it is. I, I made this with Cointreau. I think I like them better when they're made with Grand Marnier or something with just a little bit of sweetness to it because that's pretty bracingly tart. Nothing wrong with that. I like what you said. It's like a tequila-less margarita because that is what it registers as. It's a wholly uninspiring drink though. I mean, I am left feeling just a gaping, yawning void in myself in my quest for liquid satisfaction. I, I drink it and I experience something like the way the void looks back at you. There's simply nothing in there. Right after this, I'm gonna make a drink called an oil spill, which I've never had and I'm gonna lie, I don't want it. I don't wanna drink this drink, so. Ugh, I'm just reading the description too, oh boy. I'm gonna make an oil spill. You want one? Sure. Um, we're gonna do an ounce of Goldschlager in each of these. Goldschlager is a very sweet cinnamon liqueur with flecks of gold in it for no very good reason. Yep, the gold is edible. Why is it edible? I don't know. I think because it just kind of is. Now a quarter ounce, you know, or just like a drop, whatever, of your blue curacao. And you try to gently slide it in down the side there. Cool, so you get like a a little gradation, a bit of an ombre. Then you take Jägermeister and we're gonna float an ounce of Jägermeister on top of this. Glub, 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 says the bottle of Jägermeister. That of course is our oil spill. I believe they use these in scientific modeling to see how an oil spill disaster will spread. It's not an unpleasant odor that's in the room right now off of this, you know, the cinnamon, it's, it kind of smells nice, the cinnamon and everything else that's going on there. I don't hate what I'm smelling. I don't feel like you need to shoot that though. I think you can just take a deep sip and try to get all three layers and you know, a little bit. I don't think you need to drink the whole thing. <laughs> Jazz. Yeah, I get all the cinnamon. -y. That's a lot better than you'd think. The cinnamon just takes over. Yeah. You don't, you're right. People think that uh, Jaeger is like a really powerful and gross and disgusting thing, but like, honestly, nah. This is mainly cinnamon. And the blue carousel, you taste nothing. All you taste is cinnamon and sweetness. Yeah, I don't know why the Jaeger, well, the Jaeger's there for the color. It does nothing for the flavor. It's shocking because I, I, Jaegermeister is pretty potent flavor. It's pretty powerful anise or anisette. And uh, not here. Nope, just ghost liquor. I'm sorry, uh, my brain just stopped working because I'm reading that the next drink is called the Ranchero and that it's a shot of tequila topped with Tabasco and ranch dressing. Do they drink that in frats? Is that a thing? They drink those in frats? What? It's an initiation drink. Is that true? I don't know. You're just making a guess? <laughs> yeah. You're just fucking with me now. This is just torture Greg times now. Okay. Okay. I see how it is. The Ranchero, right after this. We're making this drink called a Ranchero that I possibly dreamed. I don't know if it was real, but apparently whatever psychic vibration I was receiving it from, it's gonna be a shot of tequila. We're gonna go with one, one ounce. We're building it small. Come on, I'm not trying to die here. And I'm making two, because Meredith says she's gonna join me in this one. Okay, wow, we're gonna go with even less. Slightly less than a half. <laughs> Why am I measuring? So it's it literally, on. yeah, it's like a shot glass here. Mini bottle of Tabasco. And it's a couple dashes of Tabasco in there. And then you throw some ranch dressing on it. And then you just do a nice little, oh. A little, little of that in there. So apparently in some circle of hell, this kind of thing is called a ranchero. Whoa! hi ya ya Did you taste the ranch? I didn't taste the ranch. I got a little, but... I didn't taste it. They all Tabasco after that. That was a lot of Tabasco sauce. I think maybe I went a little too heavy on the Tabasco. I think my Tabasco hand is too heavy. Whew, man. So, I mean, I, I did taste the tequila. Uh, Patron cuts right through there. That was not enjoyable. I could see, yep, frat guy. If you're, that's frat guy approved. It's a hazing drink. Yeah, that would have been the format for this episode. Frat guy approved. Frat guys are gonna like that. Next up is a pickleback. Uh, do I need to do that one? I like a pickleback. You want, actually. do you just want one? I just want a pickle. I'm gonna eat a pickle. You need a pickle. The pickle on the back of that, that shot, well, man, that's nothing satisfies after a shot of Tabasco like a pickle. Isn't that a combo? Mm-hmm. That's a combo. Roll the camera. We're gonna do the pickleback because I feel like if I don't do the pickleback, these people are gonna give me so much shit. I got it. If you want to pick up a bottle of Yellowstone bourbon, it's available through Curiata at drink.curiata.com. Pickle. Backle. <laughs> the dill in there. 
<laughs> it's really something special. Isn't that how pickle juice looks? These are, I mean, these are fucking good pickles. They're good. <laughs> these are great pickles, dude. So what do we do here now? I do. So you take the shot. A shot, and then, a shot of whiskey. Like, you is this for people first. who don't like? Oh, do you want them? Is it a cement mixer? Do you want them in your mouth at the same no. time? No. So the first time that this was given to me, I thought I was being punked, but I did it. It's. It's a chaser. It's it's like, right. right. You don't like the whiskey. You want to erase the whiskey, you want the pickle. Right. Which is kind of what I just did with the pickle on the uh, the Tabasco. Right, and I'm a whiskey sipper now in my life. So right, I don't course. like, there's no need for a pickle back because I am there for the whiskey. Facts, facts, facts. So you're erasing the whiskey with the pickle juice. All right, here we go. Cheers. Oh wait, now you go we this. Got cheers first. Fine whiskey. Oh, that works. So, but what I was doing was I'm, I'm judging that on how effectively the pickle brine erases the taste of the whiskey from your mouth. It just overrides all of your receptors, your cellular flavor receptors on your tongue so that like the whiskey's gone. So this is an evil drink though. The reason I think this is an evil drink that shouldn't exist. It is effective, it works, but that's the problem. I think that this is a drink that appeals to you when you are young and you're drinking and honestly, if you need that shot of pickle juice, you don't need to be drinking that ounce or two ounces of whiskey. You're not ready for that yet. <laughs> You're not there. <laughs> it does work, but I think that if you need this crutch, then, you know, lay off the whiskey. Have something else. <laughs> that's, that's what I think. You'll come to it, my friends. You'll come to the whiskey later. It'll, it'll, it'll be waiting for you. Well, I got one left on this list. I guess I gotta do it. It's called a candy corn. And it's got a spirit in it that I truly hate called Galliano. My research indicates that I might have the wrong orange liqueur for this. Um, I might want something that's actually like opaque and orange colored as opposed to this like clear orange stuff. But there's nothing much I can do about that right now. We're just gonna do our best, okay? I'm gonna throw a slug of this Galliano. We're gonna put a little Galliano down in there. And you know what? It's come up on the show that people were like, your Galliano tastes like fennel or anisette? That's crazy. Galliano doesn't taste like that. Galliano tastes like vanilla. And I had just instinctively responded, well, this is the original Galliano. Yes, I guess there's a vanilla Galliano out there, but I'm pretty sure that drinks that call for Galliano are calling for Galliano. Um, what I have found out since looking into that, because I didn't actually know anything about Galliano, is that Galliano, in its ridiculous, absurd bottle, it is a fennel and vanilla liqueur. So for whatever reason, I was very strongly, and Meredith as well, because she said the exact same thing, resonating with the fennel note. I'm gonna try a little bit more of it right now just to see if I can pick up vanilla in this at all. But I mean, if it's vanilla and fennel, I don't know how you guys are getting the vanilla because like vanilla is so much less potent than fennel. Oh, it's strongly an anisette, but I do see how you guys can, how it can be registered as vanilla. There is a vanilla note in there. It's way subtle compared to the anisette, in my opinion, though. And it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet and pretty thick. I'm gonna throw just a tiny amount of simple syrup in here. This extra little drop of sugar in here is just gonna help increase the specific gravity, the density of this first layer so that our next layer will sit on top of it. You know, honestly, I thought it wasn't gonna matter much because I thought my Galliano, that the colors were gonna be too similar, but I'm looking at this and this is actually very strongly yellow. So I actually think we're gonna be fine for these layers. And uh, we're gonna just put in a layer of dry curacao. Is it layering? Uh huh. And now we just top it up with heavy cream because all things are better with heavy cream. And there we have uh, kind of the thing that it's supposed to be. So this should be a ringer for the flavor because the it's Galliano, it's sweet and it's orange liqueur and it's heavy cream. The look, I think there's a different orange liqueur that's like ideal for this, that's opaque, not clear, and deeply orange. I think that would probably be better, but we should we should be on it for the flavor. I don't really know what to expect. I don't either. No, it's not candy corn. An alcoholic version of candy corn, maybe. Yep, I could see it. That is the most, that's awful. That is brutal. I mean, that is just like absolutely torturously sweet thick and creamy. That's not good to drink for humans. But I do agree. I, I see 
it as an alcoholic candy corn. And you know what's funny? I never realized this, but I think that maybe there is a slighter, less than this, but a slight element of anisette in candy corn. I never really thought about like what flavor candy corn was because they just color. They just call them candy corn because the way they look. They're not corn flavored. Perception and expectations are so important. When you tell me that's a candy corn cocktail, I believe you that it tastes like candy corn. But obviously, if you put them side by side, they don't taste the same. Yeah, what did we learn? I don't know. Like that these exist, they're bad. They have no redeeming qualities. I, no takeaways at all. I got nothing. I got nothing. Yeah, Hearthstone, head empty. <laughs> eyes, cartoon X's. I, I don't, I have no thoughts at all about this subject matter at this point. Like these are bad drinks for bad times and you don't need them. They weren't good. They were, the, the best thing that you can say about them is that they are effective. They are alcohol delivery mechanisms that uh, slip right past the unsuspecting lips, which I think is their goal. I don't want them. I don't want them. I don't need them. This was an episode of How to Drink. I, I, you know, it was, and we shot it, and apparently you watched it, and I truly, deeply thank you from the bottom of my heart. I don't think I'm gonna do it again. I apologize for everything that's come before this moment, so thanks for sticking with it. If you wanna gripe at me about the, this episode, go ahead. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. Uh, that's the best place to gripe at me. I'm on Twitch and TikTok too. They're down there where the young people are at. The young people, they're at the Twitch and the TikTok, and I'm on there sometimes being old. If you want a better stuff, if you want to see better episodes of HTD, here are four of them that I, I guarantee they're better. I guarantee even my worst episodes are better. They're just, they are. So please, thank you. Enjoy. See you next time on another HTD. Bye-bye.